chewing. Something that we do every day without much thought. It's easy and effortless. Surely it can't require that much coordination. Wrong. Movements of the jaw, or to use its proper name, the mandible, need to be dynamic enough to contribute towards speech, be strong enough to bite through a chunky carrot, and also be able to move with the endurance required to chew a piece of gum through that three-hour exam. So what allows the mandible to meet all of these demands? The answer to this is found in this tutorial on the muscles of mastication. During this tutorial, we'll briefly discuss the anatomy of the mandible, focusing specifically on its bony landmarks relevant to the muscles of mastication. We'll then learn all about the temporomandibular joint, which is formed between the mandible and the skull, such as its joint morphology and range of movement. Once we know what is being moved and where, we'll get our teeth into the anatomy and function of the four muscles of mastication, which are the medial pterygoid muscle, the lateral pterygoid muscle, the masseter muscle, and finally the temporalis muscle. Once we've chewed our way through the anatomy, we'll have a clinical note for dessert. But before we tuck in, let's just get familiar with why these muscles exist. They exist because of mastication, which is the process of grinding and chewing food into smaller pieces in the oral cavity transforming it into a lovely congealed mass, or if we're going to use the proper term, a food bolus. So why do we need this bolus? Well, two reasons. Firstly, try swallowing a sprout. It's just not going to happen unless a bolus is made, which can be swallowed with ease. Secondly, mastication is the first step of digestion and increases the surface area for digestive enzymes to act upon. Let's now have a look at some of the key components of mastication. So in case you're wondering why we're talking about a bone in a muscle video, the mandible serves as the insertion point for each of our four muscles of mastication. So it's handy to get familiar with its basic anatomy. If we disarticulate the mandible from the skull, as we are doing right now, we can see that the mandible can be separated into three parts. The body, the two rami on either side, and the angle of the mandible which joins the rami to the body. The rami have a very distinct shape, mostly due to two processes which project superiorly. The most anterior is the coronoid process, and the most posterior is called the condylar process. The condylar process has a slender stalk, called the neck of the mandible, which flares outward superiorly to create a long protuberance at the top, called the head of the mandible. This video is not over yet. Continue watching now the full video at kenhub.com. We have lots more videos like this one available to our premium members on our website, not to mention all the fun quizzes, related articles, and Atlas sections. So click on the button in the middle to watch the full length video and master anatomy.